following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. What's up? What's up, Batman? How's it going? Good, good. Just, uh, you know, hanging out, doing the thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Hanging out with my snake. We got some color changes with our name plates, and we got some colorful snakeage going on there. Like, yeah. what is that? Yeah, I thought I'd add a little color because the uh, the last banners weren't showing up so bold. You know, they they were kind of hiding themselves in with our backdrop there. So Making that's up. the color changing. Yeah. And then my snake here. Yes, this is Atari. And I named him Atari for the old school game because of his pixelations here. He's, he's got smiley faces all the way up his front part here. Um, it's hard to tell through the screen, but it's insane. Like, first of all, like the last couple episodes, last couple shows, you've always had something small and it was like, cool. Like, all right. Yeah. Like, but I feel like this would be a full on panic moment. If I was in the studio with you right now, I would totally <laughs> be like, yee, 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 yee. I don't know. I don't, I, 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 yeah, I'm gonna have to face my fears, bro. Like, I'm serious. I gotta do this. This is a bucket list. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's crazy. So, uh, like, how big does that get? Is it as big as it gets? Like, what? So, Atari is a reticulated python, and he is the longest snake in the world. So, the largest snake in the world is the anaconda, only because they get so fat. But the longest snake is the reticulated pythons. Yes, there is an issue thing going on down in Florida. Um, you know, breeding facilities got hit by hurricanes and they're out and about. Lots of different types of pythons. But he is a puppy dog. He's so sweet. He's a mochino tiger. Um, and that gives him his pattern and color variations there. So oh, he's a super he's sweet so boy. Cool. Look at his puppy dog eyes. Is so, that him making noise? Is that is that him? Yeah, he's got giant nostrils. So, of course, you're going to hear him breathing. Wow. And his tongue, that's how he smells. So he's just out sniffing, seeing what he can get into. Reticulated pythons are one of the most curious snakes that there are. Their big old head, you know, can hold a big old brain in there. So wow. sometimes he looks like mega minds if you... You look at him. He's just so cool. Wow. I bet he's pretty fast, huh? Yeah, he's quick and he's always on the move. Always. I was a little bit worried about my headset tonight because he's just always on the move. Wow. So this is, you know, we, I brought on a bunch of ball pythons the last few weeks and mm -hmm. I think I brought on some tortoises and whatnot, but you're going to have to go check us out at Standout Serpents. Get your knowledge, do your homework before you just go get a snake. Because, yeah, you know, I, if you're me, don't get a snake. <laughs> appreciate snakes from a distance. <laughs> Understood, yeah. yes. Yeah, definitely do your homework first. That is cool. That's so cool. You don't want to end up buying a snake because he looks cool and end up being, you know, one of the biggest snakes in the world. Up to 20 feet long, you know. <laughs> He's about 
nine feet right now. I'm just gonna like boop boop boop. Rachel, oh, I fucked up. I bought this thing and I don't know what I shit. Fuck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Dale, yes, he is nine, nine and a half feet. It's hard to measure him accurately because he's always, you know, twisting up. So wow. So Ten feet. Make sure you go check us out. Um, Facebook is the best way to go. Stand out serpents. Or on Instagram and then our website as well. We got a new location opened up by appointment only. You can go and check everything out there. And I got a picture here. Stand out serpents. Nice. So I'm going to have to put him up. So let's bring on our guest tonight. Our yeah. guest. Rocky Absolutely. Kramer. So Mr. Rocky Kramer in the house this, this fine evening with us. Yes. Yeah, so, um, because I got to put him up. I'm going to bring him on and let him do a little intro about himself and how he's from Norway and how badass he is with the guitar. So here is Rocky Kramer. Hello, fellow humans and oh, snakes. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Rocky? How are you tonight, man? I'm doing deliriously well. How are you guys? Oh, uh, you know, living the dream. Living the dream. Sweet. Always good to hear. <laughs> that, that's an interesting word deliriously well i love it it's uh i i stole it from gene simmons because uh he's he's the rock star to you know get ideas from right yes Absolutely. Uh, it can't it can't be more entertaining than kiss <laughs> <laughs> so you are from norway tell us a little bit about that and when did you come to the u.s and why Ah, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm from uh, uh, Trondheim, Norway, which is the third largest city in Norway. Uh, if you're not familiar with Norway, it's in the, in the northern parts of uh, Europe. Uh, it gets very cold in the winter, which uh, is, uh, it's both good and bad. You get used to it, you know, if we do a lot of skiing and uh, we learn how to skate and things like that to, to keep us uh, busy during the winter years. But uh, because it's cold outside, we like to be inside. So we also like to do things like play instruments, and uh, we we enjoy music and uh, playing music. So that's really uh, that's how I got started. Was because my family, you know, they all love music, and they my parents were both professional musicians. So it just uh, made sense to do that myself, really. Um, so uh, you know, my father was a first violinist in the, in the Trondheim Symphony Orchestra. My mother was a piano teacher and, uh, and a singer. And uh, I, I just wanted to keep that going. I started on the violin and then I switched to the guitar. And when I switched to the guitar, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be an American rock star. You know, I was a big Kiss fan and uh, other, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of American bands that I listened to. And I just uh, figured, uh, hey, I sh that's where I should go. So I, I've actually been there for 10 years now. It's hard to imagine, but uh, uh, I feel like I've been here <laughs> a while. <laughs> nice. You're a, on the, you, you're a keyboardist too, correct? You, a little uh, yeah. Bit she, yeah. Beat me to it. she beat me to it. That was going to be my next. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yes. I, so the thing about the keyboard is that I'm not really, I don't consider myself very good at it, but it is a great instrument to uh, write music on because you can really play any type of sound you can if you want to play a, a, a string section or you want to hear some congas or you know it can be whatever you want uh, that's what keyboards are for so I think they're they're they're, they're great I just was I was great at it. <laughs> but I make it work I make it work I, I, I record a lot of I record a lot of keyboards but uh, I'm never pleased with myself <laughs> Rocky, you, you know, coming over from, you know, Norway to here, like, what is the thought about America and our music in comparison to what you guys have going on over there? Because I've, I've been a fan of the metal from over there for, oh, yeah. for quite some time. And uh, one of my favorites just off the top of my head are, is uh, Burzum, if I'm pronouncing oh, yeah. that properly. Um, uh, I try not to butcher names. <laughs> um, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but that's just one of the bands that I've kind of followed for a while. Um, and but I just wanted to ask you. You know, I've never had a chance to really sit down and talk to somebody um, about the music from 
in comparison to here and there. Can you fill us in a little bit? Oh, yeah. Uh, Norway is probably the most uh, known for uh, the Norwegian black metal, which is, uh, you know, different than all the other black metals out there. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very tough stuff. And uh, unfortunately, it had it comes with some bad press because of some church burnings and some murders. But uh, that, I guess that's just a part of the game when you're uh, when you're in uh, in one of those bands. Uh, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, I have some friends that they, they really love that stuff, and uh, and uh, it's very interesting to hear it because they they don't even they're not necessarily looking for the best qualities. Like like when I think of like American metal, you got you know Metallica and Megadeth and Slayer, and and all like the the bands that are just they go into these very fancy studios and. And they're, they, they, they're really trying to make it sound good. And uh, a lot of the Norwegian metal is kind of almost the opposite. A lot of the black metal bands, they're like, oh, you have a cassette player? Oh, yeah, let's use that to record the album. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which is not exactly, uh, it's, it's not, you know, the, the perfect sound. But uh, that's kind of like, that's the part of the mentality is uh, looking for something that's, that's imperfect. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super polished. Because it's about uh, it's about the music and the the meaning behind the music. So, uh, I think it's just uh, Norwegian music in general. It, they're just kind of open to a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be super polished and super commercial necessarily. It's it's more about looking for the emotion and the uh, and the sort of uniqueness of it. So there's a lot of different types of bands. So I love that. You know, yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, and and people are more open to hearing that stuff because. Uh, uh, I, I get the feeling sometimes when I'm in the U.S. that, uh, well, I'm here now, but uh, that uh, people they want to see the big bands and and that's that's it. You know, if like mm -hmm. if they haven't heard of you, they don't necessarily want to see you perform. And, and yeah. I feel like people miss out a lot. They're well, the uh, Nickelback fans. I call them the Nickelback fans. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I, yes. I, I try. I, you know, I, I try not to like give them too much. But I mean, honestly, you know, like it's kind of a cookie cutter thing. You know, and yes. there's like five big bands in the United States. And if you haven't seen them, then you're not cool, you know. Right. And I don't know. I would be perfect. If I was ever a millionaire, I'd be perfectly content just traveling around to countries to see other types of music and how it's done because it's not yeah. done. You know, it's just not done the way it is here. You know, good, bad, ugly, all that. Yeah, they have cultural indifferences that influence them as well. So there's so many different aspects to look at when it comes to music from other countries. Yeah. And even though you got you guys have that rap Norway with the, the metal, the even the Viking metal, um, is you still produce this? The country itself produces different types of music. It's not all just one one side mm -hmm. coming out of there so but you're still you're still rock and roll you're you're still metal yeah yeah, yeah um, I, I didn't get into the black metal <laughs> personally <laughs> yeah is it harder for you uh rocky like producing music putting music together is it like our platform is is accessible to you guys over there creating your music and creating you know your directions um I found it a little bit hard uh, doing what I wanted to do, which is more uh, progressive rock, progressive metal, kind of more in the vein of Pink Floyd and Dream Theater and, and like that sort of style with a lot of complicated stuff. It, there's not like a big, uh, there's not a big musical community for that. Uh, I found it hard to find fellow uh, prog metalers. So, uh, uh, but you know, it, 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 you know, it's, it always depends. Like Again, you know, people like different types of music, so you kind of have to, when you're going to work together, you kind of have to find uh, some sort of common ground and make it work that way, you know. But uh, I don't know. It's uh, I, I just had something very specific in mind because I'm a songwriter and I, 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 you know, I really love to write music. That's maybe my biggest passion of all. So it's really important to me to be able to release that the way that I wanted to. So that I kind of just wanted to be a solo artist because of that. And I was like, you know, I might as well just go to the U.S. and uh, get my own band and, and we'll play, you know, my music and put my name on it. And if it's not to people's liking, then it's, you know, I get the blame. <laughs> so with that being said, let's talk about your album, Firestorm. Yes. So 
um you put that out and that you wrote all of that correct you wrote composed i did all yes yes and uh, it's ahead. a concept album correct it and is it's a, up. yes uh i i grew up with concept albums i you know i'm a big pink floyd fan i love the wall dark side of the moon and you know like just when you listen to an album from start to finish and you feel like you're hearing one story and there's a sort of a development. It's almost like watching a movie. Like you feel like it's just one thing, which is very different than when you're listening to like pop albums where every song is a, just a different three minute song. It's like, okay, this song is about love. This next song is about love. This next song is about pizza. And then this next song is about love. And you're just kind of going through these, <laughs> these songs. And it's like, okay, that's nice. But sometimes you want to hear a story and that's kind of, I, I'm more into that because it's uh, it makes it more more uh, fun to actually listen to the album from start to finish, which is very uncommon to do these days because everybody makes playlists and they want to hear track two and track seven and then they uh, forget about all the other songs. But uh, I think it's really important to listen to the whole thing. So Firestorm is something that I it was an album that I wrote when I was sixteen, and uh, I wanted to write a song or an album about uh, growing up and dreaming about being a rock star you know i thought you know i think that's something that people can uh relate to i mean when you're a teenager you have big dreams and uh, you, you want to make them a reality and that's you know you know why not try to do it so that's kind of essentially what the album is about uh but it touches on mental health and other things but uh i just you know i always write i, I try to be as honest as i can when i write music i try not to create some sort of uh illusion of some uh fake life or something you know which a lot of people do especially when you're hearing a lot of the uh, popular music these days like people like they don't live like that you know like they do in music videos and stuff you know they don't, that's that's not their life <laughs> right uh, you know um you know you got to be honest with with yourself and honest with your fans you know that's how you develop uh credibility absolutely and so you you mentioned that your songs aren't um, your cookie cutter, what they're teaching you nowadays with, you've got your chorus and your yeah. bridge and that's it. But so you have stories behind it. And I want to touch base on the song alcohol because you hear the word alcohol and you think it's going to be a party song maybe. Right. But yeah. <laughs> that song is not, it's not about that. Can you tell us a little bit about alcohol? Yes. Uh, so alcohol I wrote uh, when I was 16, and uh, the the whole song kind of started out with just that little, there's a little acoustic intro that uh, I wrote on my guitar. I wrote it on my, on my electric, actually, but, uh, and I just want to kind of go from really clean to like a heavy sound, and uh, uh, that's just a little bit of the composition, but uh, I I kind of started with the, with the chorus, which is I'm your alcohol and you're my alcohol, which, you know, makes you think of it as a love song and you certainly can uh it can certainly be a love song if it, if it means uh if that makes sense to you and that uh makes it right for you and it makes it meaningful to you but uh what really inspired me was uh, uh just the idea of being uh being an artist on stage and uh looking out in the audience you have that sort of relationship uh with the audience you're kind of addicted to each other you know you're 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 kind of uh high on, on each other like uh, so i just uh, i wanted to kind of write a song about that because uh you know we have we have, we have a lot of traditional love songs uh, out there I, I i don't think we necessarily need more so i thought it would be interesting to kind of write it from an artist's perspective and how you're kind of uh enjoying each other uh, when you're uh, on stage and performing so you're kind of you know you're each other's alcohol and i like using alcohol as a kind of a way of talking about love and addiction because uh alcohol is you know it's something that makes you feel good but it can also make you feel bad it can also you know it has it has it's goods and bads so you yeah. know i think it's a good thing when you talk about love because you know love doesn't always work out and you always you know they can be trouble so uh in that respect too if you want it to be a love song and you can also say that well it's there are goods and bads about it Awesome. I can admire that. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Like, uh, in and out of that, all the way around, like that whole <laughs> thing, like, absolutely. You know, I I sat back and I was checking out Firestorm myself personally. 
and the outsider kind of spoke to me too ah, yes. and and i kind of wanted to pick your brain about that particular song and what your thought process was when you sat down to hammer that out to write that it uh yeah the outsider is uh was a uh, was an interesting song for me to write because i i really wrote it uh the the, the be- sort of the beginning of that story was essentially that uh you know i was I f- always felt like an outsider in school because I was the guy who wanted to wanted to do music and all the other kids, well, most of the other kids wanted to, they wanted to play soccer, you know. I mean, Norway, which Norwegians are not necessarily very good at soccer, but uh, they love soccer. You know, soccer is a big thing. And I was not uh, super into that. So I was kind of, I had sort of my own little circle and we were kind of staying away from everyone else. So we were kind of the outsiders and uh, when I wrote that song, it was just kind of um, just just from writing from that sort of emotional uh, uh, aspect of, of feeling like you don't belong with uh, with everyone else. And uh, but kind of speaking up about it. And, uh, you know, it's like you made me a freak, but uh, now it's my turn to speak, uh, you know, because it's, it's kind of, you know, I'm kind of shouting back at the people, you know, it's kind of saying, you know, it's your loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like it's a perfect uh, anthem for anybody that just, you know, hasn't hasn't had a fair shake, you know, I right. guess, you know, in, in any which way you look at it. So. Uh, so, yeah, I just I wanted to say thank you for that song, because that was it was oh, it was a good awesome. one. It was a good one for me, like and uh, summed up some of my childhood as well so hopefully some people out there check it out and get a chance because man the whole album is just sick but like <laughs> there's I, there's definitely oh, a story there, there it is sure yeah check it out everybody it's a great album it really is it's Thank got you. elements that we are missing in this day and age it's it is almost becoming non-existent until we come up with people like Rocky kramer here to bring it out yeah, well, that's kind of what I wanted to, because I, you know, I, I grew up with music that was, you know, I, I love the 70s and the 80s and even the 60s. I just kind of want to bring that back a little bit, because we're, uh, a lot of the music that comes out these days, it, it all kind of sounds the same, and they all use the same guitar amps and the same drum samples, and and they all use auto-tune or whatever to, you know, everything sort of sounds the same to me. So I wanted something that had more, re- we had a lot of real instruments, and, you know, you're hearing real drums real musicians and then i think that's kind of and it's important because it's kind of getting lost these days some people say that oh you can't tell the difference i'm like no a real musician <laughs> or a real person a, somebody real in the music can tell like i i'm sorry yeah like right. i refuse to i refuse to buy the whole well if you if you're really good with your tools you can hide it and you can make it really like no, like how are you gonna bullshit a bullshitter? Like right. how? You... <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. You, you know, like no, like so. I, I I appreciate that for real. Like that's that's a honest thing right there for real. Awesome. Well, thank you. So one thing we do with RA Nation is we're trying to guide people and musicians and the music industry mm-hmm. into a new sense of direction after everything's happening um, with venues closing and uh, bands having to, you know, dismember and not, you know, be a thing anymore. So what kind of suggestions would you have? And I'd like to incorporate how your concept album was in there and your songwriting and what you do. What Mm -hmm. kind of suggestions would you have for musicians these days? Um, uh, Well, you know, it depends depends on where you're at and depends on what you want to do. I mean, assuming that you're, you're young and, and a little bit, uh, uh, you know, clueless <laughs> and, and you don't know where to start. I think that, uh, it's, it's always important to obviously to really, uh, master your craft. Like that's, that's, that's really something that I think a lot of people forget how much work it is to get to that point, you know, because people always see, they always say, well, you make it look so easy. And it's like, they always forget how, how much work it is to make it look easy. And, uh, and so if you, if you want to do it, you know, you really have to work hard. And that's, I know that's not usually what people want to hear because they always want, they always want to, you know, 
get picked up by a limo and the, on the first day and, and the right and, uh, now and, syndrome kicks in exactly you know the whole concept of being an overnight sensation is, is really it really doesn't exist because everybody has to start doing a lot of things that you never really get to see and uh, so that's that's important but the other thing which is very uh, it's very easy and it's hard at the same time today is that you should really show people what you do and, and, and really even if you haven't mastered your craft perfectly yet you should always be showing people what you do because it's really important that people get to see what you do even if it's still developing and uh, uh, you know if you just even if you're learning a song you can you know you can share it and it's a little tricky because sometimes you have a lot of uh, you get a lot of attention when you post something social media and other times you get nothing so uh, it's, it's kind of tricky to figure that out but uh, the more you post basically uh, the more chances you get to actually get something out there to at least somebody and then you know the moment people start talking and and all of a sudden it people share it with people and I mean I, I, I hear from people from all over the world and I, I, I never would have if I had just kept it all to myself it's it's, it's always interesting to see sort of people getting comments from people from uh, you know countries I've never even been to it's like I don't know how they heard of me but uh, but they did and that's really cool so that's really important you gotta let people know what you do Yes, definitely. And I've got all, all of the social links down there for everybody to follow you because that's important too, as yes. all those social media platforms. So one of those platforms that you do is Twitch and you have yes. a show on Twitch. And I'd really like to kind of narrow down it with that because you, you have a target audience, audience sort of. You've got listeners from all over the world, obviously, because it's a worldwide yes. platform. What do you do on it? And um, what kind of, where, what niches have you found to be a success? Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's called Rock and Roll Tuesdays. Um, it's Rock and Roll Tuesdays with Rocky Kramer. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a show I do, uh, as you can uh, probably tell by the name, every Tuesday. Uh, at 7 p.m. Pacific, and uh, it's just basically a two-hour, uh, well, it, it's supposed to be a two-hour show, but I kind of always go over because by the, by the time you get hit two hours, there's 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 so many people that do requests and stuff, so it's kind of more fun, And uh, but it, the show is really all about rock and roll. It's something I started doing bec uh, when I you know couldn't perform in person. I was like, you know, I want to perform on the internet uh, at home, you know, basically, and uh and that's what I'm doing. So uh, it's uh, m uh, we do a lot of covers. It's mostly rock. Uh, I do some metal. I mean, I've done Metallica, Megadeth, uh, maybe some other ones. Uh, but uh, I try to stick mostly to rock and like hard rock. And uh, it just it's just uh, it's I kind of do a different theme every week. Uh, tomorrow we're doing a 80s night, uh, so we're gonna do some 80s songs. But uh, we've done like Halloween for Halloween. You know, we did Thriller and. A lot of Monster Mash and other other stuff like that. Uh, uh, there you go. There's the promo for tomorrow, and uh, it's just uh, it's all about uh, just having a good time. And then we kind of get sort of halfway through the show, and then people you know people always uh, request songs, and uh, they say, "Oh, can you do this song?" It's like, "Yeah, sure. You know, I can do that." And sometimes it's like, "Oh, I I don't know if I feel confident doing it today, but I'll I'll, I'll write it down. I can do it next time." You know, I try to I try to make sure that people feel like I'm. I you know listen to them and a lot of people they they, they always say that they appreciate that that I actually read uh, I read all the all the uh, comments or all the the chat uh, uh, because uh, you know some people feel ignored you know when they're watching streamers on Twitch so I try to make it sort of more of a conversation and and we just try to have fun for you know two and a half hours every Tuesday and uh, uh, a lot of people come back you know a lot of people watch every week which I think is really cool. And then there's people that come in, new people that come in every week. And, uh, I mean, we've had people from, I mean, it, it's going to be heavy from, like, the U.S. and Canada and, and, and South America. But, you know, we, sometimes there's people there from, we've had people from Australia, New Zealand, uh, Iceland, uh, Finland, Germany, wow. uh, Russia. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, and then in any any country like, you know, Brazil, uh, uh, Peru and the uh, uh, you know, any anything from South America and uh, Mexico and so on. It's just, I mean, 
it's just it's amazing probably most most states probably by now has, has, been, has showed up in the chat uh, but uh and yeah it's just really fun gives people a chance to kind of go to a rock concert that they are able, able to be a part of and kind of uh shape a little bit because you know if, if you see bon jovi you're going to see bon jovi doing bon jovi for two hours but when you see rocky kramer you actually can say hey can you do megadeth and it's like sure you know i can do that and then you're kind of a part of it and you're creating that uh you're kind of creating a part of the show which I, I think is really cool yes and do you have for being from norway do you have a lot of people listening from norway norway i'm sure there's uh, a time zone you know it's a it's a tough one because I, when I go live, it's about 4 a.m. in Norway, and mm -hmm. I've had uh, a few members of my family stop by, and they're like, I just woke up, you know, at like 4 a.m. just to watch the show. <laughs> and I feel a little bit bad because uh, at 4 a.m. and you're trying to sleep, you know, a rock and roll show is not exactly the most relaxing thing to be yeah. a part of. But It's not exactly uh, a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a cup of coffee. So <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it, uh, you know, whenever they do that. You know, anyone that, that tunes in, when they're supposed to be asleep, I appreciate it very much. But please go go to sleep because you can always watch the VOD. You can always watch it. Uh, the VOD stays on Twitch for two weeks, and and, and we upload it on on YouTube uh, uh, afterwards, and you can watch it there forever. No, uh, so so you, you don't have to you don't have to worry about it so much. You don't have to watch it live, even though it's fun. It's always fun to have people there. So I do appreciate anyone that watches it. We have live. somebody from Australia in the chat, by the way. Hello, Bell. Australia. Yeah. So, hello, Mia. Mia <laughs> also says foundation and practice always pay off. And Sun yes, Stealer says albums are the way true. to go artistically. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I'm, I'm a big believer in albums more than singles, which is, it kind of gets me in trouble a little bit because people always want to push, you know, the labels always want to push a single and there was, everybody wants to hear, they always want to see a music video. And I'm trying to explain. No, but I want you to hear the whole. I want you to spend a whole hour, <laughs> and that's a lot to ask, because we live in a you know one minute world these days, uh, or a ten second world. Where, you know, people are on social media that they, they look at things for ten seconds and then they move on. It's hard to tell a story yeah. in ten seconds. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I, I I like to do it the old old school way. I like that definitely. There's many approaches to many things and as long as you get the job done and get your goals met you know that's and you're yes. doing what you love that's right that's important so i that's saw right. that uh you stopped by the 9-11 concert no, and, you, Johnny. and, and uh and uh first i want to say thanks for that um and uh, that uh that was an awesome show. Um, I watched a live stream of it uh, from my couch. Uh, so it was an epic show. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, what your um, thought process going into that show, you know, hanging out with them. Like, have you hung out with all those artists all in one space like that before? Or was that something no. that was completely new to you? Um, I mean, I've been to... I've been like backstage for different things where there were other, you know, like big artists there. But uh, when you're a part of it, it's a little different because then they're like, you know, I mean, I, I did the national anthem with uh, Joey Belladonna from Anthrax, which is a really cool thing because, I mean, first of all, he's and he's a very nice guy, but he's, you know, he's a legend. He's, I mean, Anthrax is, that's one of the big four metal bands. So that's, that's like a, that's something off the bucket list right there is, is, is doing something like that. And uh, but it's also just sort of being a part of it, which uh, is really nice, especially since I hadn't done any live performances, uh, well, in like in front of real people in uh, probably like a year and a half. It was really nice to actually do it in under those circumstances because it was yeah. it was very pleasant, and there were a lot of cool people there. And uh, I mean, it was it was just uh, it was a really great night. It was just nonstop. Uh, I was gonna say nonstop rock and roll, but that wouldn't necessarily be fair because there were some great pop artists there. A little I bit mean, of everything uh, at that. At a little that bit concert. of everything. Some great yeah. dancers and uh, DJs, and I mean, it was it was great. It was it was a fantastic. It was a very fun thing to be a part of. So, um, I, and and of course, I got to play in New York, which was uh, you know great. I hadn't been to New York since I was nine years old, so wow. it was great being back there. And uh, I mean, I stayed right next to the Freedom Tower, so like literally the view from my hotel room was this Freedom Tower. <laughs> wow, <laughs> which is amazing. 
I mean, it was just, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was unreal. It was, it was great. It was, it was great being in New York again. I, I really like New York. I think it's a fun place. Uh, it's, it's like, that's like the American dream in the, in a nutshell. So, uh, it was really cool. Every, and, uh, uh, every week I have, uh, I get a, a guest question sent to me in my inbox and, uh, my question uh, my guest question this week for you in my inbox is if you had an opportunity to stay in any state in the United States and progress your career, what state would you pick and why? Oh, any state. Okay. Uh, in- interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I think I, I'll tell you sort of my process as a, as a teenager was my, the first one I wanted to go to was New York. Cause I think New York is a, is a good state to, try to meet people in, in in the industry but i ended up picking california that's where i am now because it's it's you know it's the center of the uh, entertainment industry both in terms of music and movies and, and that's kind of that's what i do i mean i'm doing a movie next year called rockin in time oh, wow. which uh which is going to be fun you know it's a rock and roll time travel movie so uh, if you're into that sort of thing uh stay tuned because we're uh, going to film it next year should be out in 2023 so I feel like I'm in the right place for all of those things. But uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, when I read biographies of, of uh, you know, different people, people start out different places and then they sort of end up other places. You know, a lot of people end up in L.A. or they end up in New York. But I think you can make it happen if you just uh, if you work hard and, and you make sure that people see you work hard, you know. Cool. Absolutely. I have a... Our nation family question for you as well. Uh, Joe asks that how many guitars do you ha- currently own? What's your favorite? And is it probably the Fender? <laughs> yes. Uh, I well, first of all, I endorse Fender, so I, that's definitely my. Uh, that's my. That's you know, that's the one I always pick. I uh, can you see this? Let's see. This is probably my favorite. This is my. Ooh. This is my Fender Stratocaster. Uh, it's called. Uh, her name is Pearl, and uh, you can't necessarily see it uh, on camera. But uh, if you see this in person, it's it's almost like like pearl. It has like a pearl type of uh, color. It's, it's, very, to it. it's very yeah. It's it's a but it's it's just a beautiful guitar. Sounds great. Uh, I put Demarzio uh, humbuckers in it, uh, and uh, it's just it's an it, it's an amazing one. I uh, so uh, so that's a Stratocaster. That's my favorite type. I have. I think I have four Stratocasters now. I have to think about it for a second, but I think it's four. And I, I'm not going to stop with four, to put it that way. Uh, I do want to get more <laughs> because that's always the rule when you are when you are a guitarist, that uh, uh, how many guitars do you need is always, you know, w- one more yeah. than what you currently have. Uh, but uh, <laughs> let's see. I, have, uh, I also have a Telecaster, so that brings up to five. I have, uh, I guess I have a few other things. I think I have two acoustics and uh i think another three or four probably like 11 or 12. you had me at triple hum just gonna say triple hum yes. yeah so yeah you you had me that, when you that, said that, it. It that's like, just you know i just love that look i i think that looks great it is it is <laughs> and uh it's it might be because uh you know i'm a big kiss fan i love Ace fraley and that's you know he had the triple humbucker you know, gibson Les paul i was like i never seen anyone with a strat playing triple humbucker so you know i i want that to be my thing <laughs> that's pretty sweet yeah awesome <laughs> i want to circle back around to the idea of you doing your your twitch streams they are live performances correct they it's all live so yes. th- that's the thing that's the, the big deal is that uh everything i do is live so you're I mean, I, I play to a backing track and things like that, but uh, you're hearing me play guitar and I'm singing live. And uh, if you know, if it goes bad, it goes bad. If it goes great, it goes great. So it's just uh, that's the challenge, you know. You get one shot. <laughs> so I want to bring that up because of our new world of this virtual world. Everything's starting to happen online through the wonderful World Wide Web. Mm-hmm. Um, how different is that from playing from a live venue? Uh, versus it's, on screen it's a um it's a little i mean it's definitely different in the sense that i'm in a i'm in a box or well, i'm not in a box really but i mean I, I feel like i'm i mean this is where i do the show right now uh, uh with a different background it looks like i'm 
in a rehearsal rehearsal room or something, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> At least I get it's a all an illusion. <laughs> right. uh, and and but uh, you know, I mean, I'm boxed in here with lights. I got that as a camera. And uh, when I do the show, I actually have two cameras, so you can see my guitar. You get a close up of the guitar, and uh, it's just. Uh, it's kind of I'm doing everything in front of a lens uh, versus uh, doing it in front of people. And the difference is really that when you're doing it in front of people, you can always see people's reactions. But when you're on Twitch, it's all based on what people are willing to say uh, in the chat. So if they can say, wow, that was awesome, or they might just leap, you know, and like you don't necessarily know. Uh, based on on uh, on you can't you can't see it you don't get those free reactions like everything is they have to actually write something so if they write that was good or that was great uh, that's that's the only way to know is like they have to make an effort yeah, so uh, but some people do some people are are that always trying to be supportive which I think is really cool but uh, uh, other people they just want to watch it on their TV and they just want to sit there and watch so. And that's fine too. And then they might tell me later, or they might, you know, send me a message or something saying, "Hey, that was great." Um, so it's kind of up to people, you know, how they want to do it uh, uh, when it comes to feedback. But it's like it's it's always up to them, uh, you know, which is different than live because live they can be like, <gasps> and you can see that, <laughs> you know, and you're like, "Oh, what did I do? I messed up." <laughs> Do you get to be your own sound guy too? You you're essentially hooking everything up. Your tech guy and sound guy. It, it's the way it's done is I have uh, it's something called, it's called an axe effects and it's really for it's for a guitar it's for it's like a guitar effects uh, processor. I also have the microphone plugged in and it's just it's it it does like my everything that I do goes through that. So both the microphone and the guitar. Uh, so it kind of does most of the job, and then it's just a matter of blending in the backing track to the point where you feel like you're hearing everything balanced, uh, which uh, it, it can be a little tricky when you're singing because you're trying to – because I'm, I'm hearing myself, you know, yeah. I'm hearing my body and my body's uh, voice, and then I'm also hearing myself in uh, in, in ears. So it's it's like getting that mix is sometimes, sometimes a little tricky, but, uh, you know – I'm, I'm, it works. I think it works most of the time. I mean, I, if it doesn't, then it's like, oh, oh that's well. definitely a big struggle. I can admit, um, I've been working with my own sound tonight cause I, I engineer the show as well. So yeah. I'm listening to everybody and coordinating it at the same time, making sure everybody's on point. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's difficult to do live shows and, and still perform at the same time. So. We talk about it all the time. Me and Rox yeah. talk about it all the time. And like, we always come back to the whole, we're fortunate that we know what we know. So that way, because I'm in my studio, she's in hers, you know, mm -hmm. and it just falls on trust and reliability and actually and accountability, you know? And, uh, <sighs> That's, I feel like one of the biggest things that's missing these days, even after a major pandemic, is still some accountability for some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's tough. It's like multitasking is, uh, is not really my favorite thing, but uh, it's uh, when you're, uh, when, you know, when, once you're live and you, you, you get in the groove, it kind of, uh, it's, it, there's like a certain flow you develop, you know, when you're doing this. So it, it's a, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm 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 not gonna complain because I do enjoy doing it. Teresa says you put on a great show. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> she, she's uh, she she watches. Uh, she, she's a viewer. She is uh, amazing. I've got to say, I've gotten. She's terrific. Yeah. We love you, Teresa. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, we're wrapping down to our last few minutes now. So um, basically, let's get a little more input from you. And what would you have to give to the audience as far as insight or guidance? Stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> Kids, don't do drugs. There you uh, go. You know, be, be good to each other. <laughs> um. No, I, I've. Uh, you can ask me anything you want. Um, <laughs> if you have anything specific. Um, but uh, no, I mean, I, I, I just, uh, you know, work hard and 
and you've come a long way open. yeah you've come such a long way you're inspiring definitely and i really suggest that people go check you out look you up um your your website is incredible by the way um oh, just yeah the, the website's that... awesome yeah thank i was you. thank you it's laid out pretty nicely even um, the way that they describe you um or you know, you're ambassador of of rock for Norway. <laughs> I love that. that is a good line. <laughs> I, I do like that one. <laughs> before we get out the door, before we get out the door, Rocky, I wanted to ask you. You know, um, looking back on where you started to where you are today, um, was there anything that you would have done differently if you could? Um, I think there's always. I mean, it's always hard to say because. If you do things, it's kind of like, you know, when, when you talk about, uh, you know, if you if you change one thing here, then everything else after that would, would, would be different. So it's a little hard to, to say, but I uh, I think that the biggest thing, and, and this is probably my best advice to anyone who wants to be in this industry, especially if you want to do anything that has to do with singing, take vocal lessons as soon as possible, because that, that's like the, the, the really... The toughest thing for a singer is to maintain their voice if they don't understand how to sing. And just because you have a, a, a good voice doesn't mean you uh, actually know how to sing or you have a proper technique. Right. And this is the reason why a lot of our favorite singers, and I'm not going to say their names, but a lot of them are considered like the best singers of rock and roll. They, they didn't really have a good technique, and that's why they were many times struggling to uh, finish a tour. They just run out of steam. And that's not a good thing. So that's my best advice. I love it. Uh, that's good advice. <laughs> Speaking of tours, we did have a comment come in. Do you have concert tour dates? Teresa's uh, questioning. We're, uh, we're working on it. It's a little tricky right now because there are some artists that are canceling stuff. And uh, But we, well, I know we're doing a festival in uh, Santa Fe Springs next year, which is kind of outside of L.A. Uh, that's in May. That's the only one that I have confirmed as of now but uh we're we're trying to trying to do more uh, summer stuff uh that would be good uh but uh i'm also shooting a movie next year so I'm, it, it's about making everything fit and we're going to record the album the next album so a lot of things to do not so much time we need more time that way do. <laughs> We'll have to catch you uh, on on the comeback around on everything. Catch back up with you and uh, have you fill us in on the writing process for the movie and kind of give us some give us some bring some cookies. Well, we can chop it up a bit. Absolutely. <laughs> some That's Norwegian exciting. cookies. Exciting, yeah. I'm. He yeah. knows where I was going with that. Absolutely. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, sir. I'll bring some recipes. <laughs> Teresa says congratulations, and Stun Steeler says you spoke of both prog metal and Norwegian metal. What do you think of Swedish prog metal normally, namely Opeth? Opeth, yeah. Opeth is uh, <laughs> that, that's those are serious guys. Uh, they have a very they have definitely have a distinct sound, and I do I appreciate what they do. Uh, I feel like Swedish metal is like it's like a huge factory, and they they make a lot of a lot of it but it's good stuff it's very, i think it's very good stuff there's a lot of metal bands that i i like oh i like this band and then i look them up and they're like oh they're from sweden oh okay so it's not like i'm not saying that i like them because they're swedish uh necessarily i'm just like they just happen to be swedish in many cases and opeth is definitely uh that's a very solid band they, they, they just uh they do something that's very like they have definitely have their own sound, and that's that's I think that's one of the most important things is is, is having that sort of uniqueness about the, uh, about them. Uh, Do you think it's support. because it's so cold in Norway that they don't go outside much and they just hang out inside in the warmth and practice all day? <laughs> I th I think so. I think it, it's uh, it's uh, it's too cold. I mean, if if you're outside, you you can go skiing, but I mean, you, you're not going to go skiing twelve hours a day. But you yeah. can be inside. You can play guitar for you know 10 hours a day and write some very heavy and uh, uh intense music <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be it it's got to be due to the cold that's, weather that's the secret it's the it's those dark uh, well first of all keep in mind that in most of uh, or in a lot of parts of norway uh when it's winter it there's almost no sun like you may you may get sun for a couple of hours and in some places the sun doesn't come up uh for a couple of months out of the year 
So what do you do? Pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics are huge over there because of that Ooh, reason. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it's so dark and because of all like it just it pyrotechnics just fits in. Uh, Absolutely. I was oh, reading an article the other day. They're talking about Rammstein and how much how much gasoline and how much fuel they actually use during yes. a show to uh, to Do sit us. down. So every show, mm. uh, the the current stadium setup that they're running right now, you, they run roughly a thousand liters, two hundred and sixty five gallons of gasoline a night for a show. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's. Oh. I I haven't seen Rammstein live yet, but uh, I mean I've seen videos. That no, that's that's a show. I mean that's amazing what they do. So I just thought awesome. that was a fun little tidbit I wanted to share with the Iraqi because that know- is awesome. Thank you. Yes, that's uh, I those guys. I mean, there's a lot of they have a lot of flames coming up uh, on on that stage. I mean that's it's just- a lot of sunburn. I'm so <laughs> you know you know when I I saw Kiss uh, a few years ago. And uh, I was not that close to the stage. I mean, I was close enough. But when those flames come up... You feel you, it. You feel that. I mean, I was probably mm-hmm. at least 100 yards away. And uh, it was just... Uh, it was hot. It, yeah, hot, I can hot, say hot. the same. When I saw Kiss, I literally went and checked my eyebrows. It's like, did they just get burned <laughs> off? It's so hot. <laughs> what? what? No. I'm about to meet Paul Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be on stage. Imagine being Gene Simmons up there when those flames come up. I, I can't even imagine. It must be so hot. I think he said that, though. I think he said it's very hot, which yeah, is why I've they only go. How the face stop. paint stays on because I'm sure they're sweating. It's hot. So and that's, uh, yeah. I think Stanley said it's like when they're done, it's like 90 pounds of gear. Because their boots, yeah. their boots, and their all the stuff like it's, it's all, it's all legit. Like it ain't, it ain't no prop from hardware store, as he said. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no styrofoam there. Right, uh, it, it's all heavy stuff. I mean, yeah. just carrying those boots around for two hours a night. I mean, that's an that's an exercise of of its own. And then they're doing all the running around, and uh, I mean, it's it's he's flying, and I mean, it's it's crazy. It's a great show, but. Uh, I, Teresa, I mean, she brought up a good, uh, she brought up a good comment. Classically trained on the violin, so yes. how do you fold in the classical training of violin into your music? Because it's such mm-hmm. a fine art, it really is. Like it's really a patience kind of art, and and right. I know so many people don't have the patience for even guitar let alone violin mm-hmm. so th- like walk me through that if you can rocky because that is a tremendous wrap around it's um uh, you know it's not for everyone I- i'll say that but uh the violin was just something that was natural for me because my father played violin so i just i picked it up and i kind of knew what to do almost right away so i mean i, I took violin lessons for a long time and that's how i learned you know how to play an instrument it's how i learned how to write music uh, or, or no how to read music i should say because i didn't really we didn't write anything because when you're playing classical you're playing what is written you're playing what's on that piece of paper you don't uh, improvise you don't uh, you don't uh, use your own thoughts you do everything that is says there it tells you how loud to play it how soft uh, if you're changing any tempos anything it's all on that piece of paper when you're playing rock and roll there's a lot of improvisation. There's a lot of kind of trying things out. Like when you see, if you go see Led Zeppelin live, and that's not necessarily a good example because you can't go see Led Zeppelin live. I don't think you've been able to see them live for probably a long time. Other than maybe with uh, uh, John Bonham's son, I guess they did some shows. They with did that. do a couple, uh, yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's even that's a, a while ago. But you you don't hear them do exactly the album. Like they're kind of jamming on the songs. And that's kind of the rock and roll mentality is you don't have to do it just like the album. Like sometimes things change and things develop. It might not be at the exact same tempo. It might not be even in, in the same notes. I mean, things change. Like Paul Stanley, again, like, I mean, he changes up the melody on a lot of those, uh, those vocals. I mean, when he performs live and obviously any guitar player, uh, I mean, they improvise uh, guitar solos from time to time or sometimes always, you know, and it, uh, it's it's 
And it's not even because they don't want to learn the solo, but sometimes it's just about getting that feel, that live feel. And, and when you're seeing a, a guitar player live, you kind of almost get a, a version of that solo that no one else will ever hear because yeah. it's it was improvised. It was done that one time and you get that special moment which is why it's kind of fun to see guitar players live because you get different things. I mean, I, I shouldn't say guitar players. I should say really any musician that plays a solo um, that is more on, on more improvised than uh, just, just playing uh, playing it like the record, which, you know, happens too. And uh, sometimes I do that as well. But the other times I like to, to improvise because just got to mix, mix, mix a little bit of both. I love that, the jam session feel. I love it. Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, I, the only thing I, I don't like is if if they if they turn a three minute song into a twenty minute song, I'm I'm not loving that. But uh, if they you know expand on something, I think that's that's always uh, cool when when they do it live. You know, it's all about kind of taking advantage of the composition and and turning it into something that's that you couldn't do on the album because the album had to be. 40 minutes or something because it has to be on a vinyl or something like that you know when you're live and like led zeppelin would do three or four hour long shows you you have time to expand on things and kind of give it something that uh, you're not going to hear maybe ever again because it'll be a special thing and i i think that's cool I love it. We actually, we're going to have to wrap up here. We're reaching our time limit here. I'm going to put in the chat though, here in a few minutes, um, the, the songs that Rocky did, he did a Led Zeppelin song. I know. So I'm going to have to throw that one in the, in the comments for everybody to check out. And then uh rock star. I got to put that one in there that that's off the album fire yep. storm. Um, everybody needs to go check them out at rockykramer.com that has everything there his bio his it's it, all there all of it any way you want to find him on any social links that's there as well so rocky yeah. such a reminder is also for the next stream on tuesday uh that's, 10 right. PM. that's tomorrow yes to, it's, it's in 24 10, hours yes it's 10 p.m eastern standard time it's actually going to be uh, Eastern Standard. That's what seven your time. Yes, seven yes. my time. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. yep. So the I got my reminder set for that. So I'll be watching. Yep. Sweet. That's the promo for that. And I really appreciate. We really appreciate you, Rocky. We, wow, we we admire you. We're happy that you got to share this space with us. <laughs> Yay! Well, I can't wait you for guys. you to come back through. I can't wait for you to come back through after all that, and then pick your brain some more on top of it. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. Hopefully Absolutely. we can catch you at a live show, get you over on the East Coast. I think that. Oh fun. yeah, would love to. Would love to. Absolutely. We're gonna try to make that happen. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Rocky. You have a great night. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank Stay you, sir. Amazing. Wow! Incredible. Hey! That was awesome. That was awesome. Teresa, thank you so much. Bella, thank you so much. Everybody, Sun Stealer. Mr. Let's see who else did I miss out on? Dale was in uh, there. Dale and Ryan, all, all my dudes. Much love to you guys. I love you guys. Um, before we get out the door, Roxy, I wanted to throw this out there. So Paul's Nightclub was able to uh, reopen and totally re uh, revamped their entire venue. And she reached out, and she's got her first show coming up. A bigger one. Uh, on the 20th going down to Paul's nightclub. So this is going to be like a show after the renovation thing. So they're going to be blowing, blowing it up there. So no cover and 21 and up. Come on out. Music starts at nine MFP my, uh, myself and my team sponsored it as well as Kimball home repairs and make sure you guys come on out and check it out. Support a great local venue. Also, um, all of our merch on mfpforlife.com is on sale right now. We're making room for the new stuff coming in. So if you haven't got your MFP merch, get it while it's still there because in a little while, it's probably going to be gone because we don't have much left. So I got to get you. We got to swap merch, Roxy. 
Yes, I I have an announcement today to make about our podcast today. Oh, um, <laughs> we we want to we want to promote our, our friends, our family, our loved ones, our music industry, our scene, right? And what's one way that we can do this, Aunt Man? How do we think we can? Give them some spotlight. Uh, you know, I guess we can show them some love. I <laughs> guess. I mean, you know, they, they like, like, you know. There you go. <laughs> no, you know, I, I think it's, um, you know, it's important to support those who support you. And it's important to, you know, make things accessible and, and make things happen for people. So... Yeah, so this is what you need to do. You need to reach out to us, whether it's Facebook Messenger, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you want to do. Maybe our email, I'm going to put that up right now, Podcast at gmail.com. Hey. Send in a submission. And during our shows, we will play a video, a music video from you. We'll talk about your band. We'll get you promoted and out there so you can be seen and heard. To we have thousands of listeners to every episode, mm -hmm. and that's just one link. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, yep, and then all the platforms such as iHeart, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes. We're everywhere. So if you want to be heard, send in a submission form. Let us know who you are, what you would like us to say about you, a little information maybe, or also your music video, and. So Share us out also. Use the use the hashtag RA Nation. And if you tell a friend or have a referral and they use hashtag RA Nation when they reach out, we will do something special for you. So get out yeah. there. It gives you incentive. It gives you incentive to, you know, be part of the team. Consider yourself RA Nation street team, if you will. Yeah, we love you for that. You know, it, it's not a one man world. This is all of us. This is an industry. This it's not a nation. one woman world either. It's like mm -hmm. a multitude of women world. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's our a nation. That's what we are. It's what we do. We're here. So yeah. send some submission form. Send feedback. What do you yeah. want to hear? What do you like? You can what? Comment on our page. You can in our group. You can leave questions, comments, like all kinds of stuff. We're looking for some people to help us with our social media. So if you know somebody that's tech savvy and is is of sound mind and wants to make a little extra money, I'll make that announcement that you can reach out to us. We need some help with our social media. If you're a qualified candidate, you will receive contact from us directly regarding that. We're going to get a post out in our group and get something going out in there because we need our community just as much as the community needs us. It's a, it's a wee thing, right? Yeah. We're here for growth. Roxy. It's always fun hanging out with you and your serpents. And, and I love how much they stand out. That's it's awesome. Like I, they, they, they're epically awesome and I can't wait to like <laughs> hit them yeah. with the stand out. There you go. <laughs> And uh, what what other treats do we have in store next week? Can you give us a hint on what you're bringing in? Have you thought about it yet? We have an artist coming in who has got an amazing set of pipes. She's a vocalist. She's a singer. She's a composer. And she has some really good insight about making it big into the world these days because she went from here to here in a matter of of overnight so. it was overnight yeah literally it was crazy like i can't wait to share that and um the best part about it i think is we're gonna get to hear we've had so many dudes on the show and i know it sounds weird to hear it for me but we've had so many dudes on the show i'm really excited to hit on this side of the music and stuff it's gonna be really cool yep so look forward to april rose gabrielli because she's she's phenomenal and that that Inside of a woman is always needed for sure. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. So make sure you go to our YouTube channel, Music Familiar Productions. Like, share, subscribe. Be a supporter. We'll support you. You support us. And until next week, 
you know, keep it real. Stay amazing. Hey, love you guys. All right. Later, guys. See you. If you